What would you say to people coming to live in Korea? I would say <laughs> just stay in your country <laughs> <laughs> because I'm coming there. <laughs> yeah. If you look into the history of Lee Sun Jin, there's an animated short on YouTube. I watched it and I cried. <laughs> and I cried, and then the very next day, I called my uh, close friend. He's my tattoo artist, actually, and then I got him tattooed on my arm. Oh, wow. So go on YouTube and type in Lee Sun Jin. Shout out to Lee Sun Jin. <laughs> <laughs> watch that. Watch that short. I live in women-only apartment because there were like all of the um, all of the apartments were women only. Our near our school. I didn't know there's women only apartments. Oh, as really? well. It's the first time I've heard of this. Really? How so how do they do it? Like it's you can't come in if you. We are not supposed to bring our fathers or boyfriends inside our apartments, and no man can live in there. Do yeah. you have a male dog? <laughs> 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 like, how Maybe. Are these, are these like what they call yosong apartment or something? Yeah, yosong jonyong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Today we're talking about whether it's good to live in Korea, whether people want to leave Korea. Sometimes the word is taljoson. Uh, it has many other different things. I guess what I want to start with is: is this a common topic amongst young people in Korea? Do people like sit together and go, "Yeah, let's leave, let's go," or is it just something that we see in media, something like that? Do you guys talk about leaving Korea, living in Korea? No, I don't think so. We can talk in online or through like. Twitter, like SNS thing, but we don't talk in offline, like by person to person. Mm. I I don't think that we are like really talking about Taljoson in real life, but media. I think that they are highlighting the Taljoson theme. And one of my professor who teaches um, journalism things, mm. he also thinks that it's the media that highlights Taljoson thing. But when we have hard times, like exams and assignments, we often say that as a meme, like Taljoson. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm, I don't think it's like a really huge topic, but I think it's something that's kind of in the back of everyone's mind, mm. and I think you can tell, especially because there are so many, there's so many um, travel variety TV shows lately compared to just like five, ten years ago. That wasn't really even a thing. Like it was, it was a huge thing if you got A-list celebrities to go to another country, but mm. nowadays it's pretty much. Um, Every, like it's the only thing that I see on TV at least. So clearly there's a demand for it, mm. for, like yearning to go to another country and kind of explore other countries rather than stay here. I see so many of these. My, my daughter Elizabeth, <coughs> eight years old, but she's into something called Dobak Tour or something like this. It's these are Joshies going around to Hong Kong and Singapore. And I'm like, you're eight years old. Why are you watching these ad Joshies go around to different countries? And they also do that. Um, they open up restaurants abroad. Like in Italy and Spain, it was like that Yun Shik Dang, and they've kept doing them since then. So, is it like just the media? Is the media gaslighting people into like you should want to leave? Like if you don't <laughs> talk about it, like. But do you see it in the media? Your professors talking about it? Yeah, um, another professor told me about like travel yenings, mm. travel variety shows mm. because. Like Korea, it's our daily life, so we can get used to it and get tired of it because Korea is the place where you study and work, right? So, mm. people wants to see another place, new place, and new things, and that's why there are like opening new restaurants, starting a new business abroad. Those kind of things catch on, I mm. think. Yeah, and so then why is it Tal Joseon? Mm. Where does that come from? Because it's not Tal Korea. Yes. That sounds like a program or something, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's not Tal Teaminguk, but Tal Joseon. I think that the word Joseon has more Confucianismic theme <laughs> in the word because for Hanguk, I think of nothing. It's the country name, but yeah. when we say Joseon, it smells like Confucianism. I think, <laughs> and people would hate Confucianism at some times and maybe that's why they call it Tal Joseon because mm. there are like yeah. yeah I agree to what Junsa said I feel they are calling it Tal Joseon because mm. they don't like the traditional um, Korean values mm. so that's the reason why they're trying to do Tal Joseon what, what are some of the traditional Korean values like what does that mean <laughs> when we say traditional Korean values or Confucianism 
it's like it's not like let's all have slaves or something like that is it oh yeah mm. it's quite hard to uh, answer but yeah. i think it's related to some um, social normalcy the korean takes mm. that we have to have a social role for our family and we have to be uri concept we concept mm. and we have to hide our personality and i think that's the reason why the more Gen Z people in Korean wanted to go abroad and show off their real color. Mm. What's Confucianism, Charlie? You feel this push of it? Um, That's a really hard question, by the way. It's a ridiculous thing to ask you. but Yeah, uh, so I want to discuss, I think, firstly, before getting into Confucianism, yeah. the word tar is Chinese for to take off. Mm -hmm. So... I guess in a way, uh, it's kind of saying removing oneself from Korea. Mm. This goes on as Korea, so mm. it's taking us, us as a like people our age, leaving Korea for, I guess, better job opportunities or um, just to a place where there's not as much societal or academic pressure. Mm. And um, I guess a lot of the issues, the underlying issues that people are facing, you can kind of trace back to Confucianism. Um, and I think what's what people are really struggling with is you have the older generation and the newer generation. Mm. And the older generation, they lived in a Korea that was a developing nation, one of the poorer countries in the world. And they're still alive. And then you have people who are, you know, closer to our age, and they're living in one of the most developed nations in the world. So you can't help but have uh, two different generations existing at the same time mm. with different ideals. Mm. And so I guess that's kind of the root cause of all of these issues that we are facing in society in Korea nowadays. Growing up with different money, different abilities, yeah. absolutely, I completely agree with that. It's a very uh, good way of describing it. Tal, so you said it's the Chinese one to take off. When I hear it, I think of Talbukja. Like North Korean defectors, I know that word's changed as well because it's like is it sotemin or something? The, the words that we're meant to use have changed. Are there any other like tal expressions? Tal bukja, tal joson. Is that it? That's just the only tals. Maybe some of the school, some of the people use tal seoul yode for the, like graduating, but they mean mm. it by somehow negative theme. Okay. Because like tal doesn't really seem as neutral. Mm. It has somehow like negative sense mm -hmm. in the word. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than when we talk about like this idea of leaving Korea, is it checking out psychologically or is it actually leaving the country? So there's this idea of tal joson or leaving the country. Does it mean like, well, what, fuck it, I want to go to Europe, I want to go to America, or does it mean I want to live in Korea, but I don't want to live in that Korea. And so it's like a psychological, it's, it's simliak tal rather than a physical tal. Is that something that's going on? Or is it like people want to leave? Because you guys all said, no, I don't see it much. I don't see it much. But when we did the surveys, what I noticed was uh, lots of foreigners like living here, want to live here. Not all of them, but lots of them. And the people that said they did want to leave, it wasn't all of them, but closer to half, they were Korean. So there was quite an element of it. So is it physically leaving? Is it psychologically leaving? I think it's physically leaving because mm. if you're not leaving Korea and you're just staying in Korea, mm. I think that's not considered as doing a uh, Tai Joseon. Mm. But I think it can maybe work in both ways because if you still live in Korea, mm. but if you want to do Tai Joseon and you don't like the traditional values of Korea, mm and you think a living abroad will be a better opportunity for me, then I think the person is mentally doing Tai Joseon. Mm. 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 I agree with her because um, some of my friends would told me about Tai Joseon thing when I mentioned about it on the Instagram poll. Mm. And um, they were really not complaining about South Korea. They had some plans for studying abroad or living outside for some years, but they plan to return to Korea anyways mm. because they want to bring their experiences into Korea or they want to have different experiences. That's all. So I don't think that people are meaning by it mentally at all. Mm -hmm. But it's just going abroad to get something that you can't get here. And I, I did that. Like I left my country and went abroad <laughs> and got all these new experiences and I loved it. I think it's very natural. Mm. 
there's also the idea that Korean people are generally very patriotic. Mm. Uh, they're like, we're in Nara, and, and you see flags everywhere and on the holidays, and we were talking about Pamyo in the car, mm. and they, they, they love that kind of thing. So rather than just leaving the country, it's just like, I want to go abroad and get some experiences. Mm. I'm go and try some different things. Like what? What can you get abroad that you can't get in Korea? Apart from the obvious. Mm. Basically, English skills first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And some internships, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if someone wants to be a professor, they could go to university. But most of my friends would say, oh, I want to travel to abroad for fun. Mm. Or they want to um, do um, exchange students for like a year or a semester or something like that. So, yeah, I think that they just want... Um, temporary studying experiences. I Are guess. you going to go abroad for your English, Yinsa? Um For something else. I mean, do you have a plan? Like, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but I don't think mm -hmm. I've ever asked you. Mm -hmm. Are you like, I want to go abroad? Yeah, I want to. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't have any like exact plans yet. Mm. But is it like just a uh, student exchange program, or you want to go and do something, or what? Mm. For me, I mm. prefer exchange student because that means I have a place to come back, mm. which is more stable. Mm. But some of my friend from another country just entranced to our school, mm. not exchange. Mm. And it seemed so brave. I could not mm. do that. <laughs> mm. um, for me, I'm planning to go on an exchange student and I'm planning like I'm going to live abroad in the future. Mm. So technically, I can say that I'm trying to do a Taijoseon. Mm. I think the reason why I want to leave Korea is that I can gain my um, ability to live independently and mm. also I can interact with different culture, people with different cultures. Mm. Mm. Have you told your parents this? Yeah, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> what do you think? That, I, I mean, it's very brave of you. It's good that you have a goal and you're like, yeah, I want to do this. Um, what do you think they'll say? Well, they'll be like, yeah, okay, go on, yeah, one, you can do it. Actually, I think my parents will support my decisions mm. because they know I, I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm. So they will eventually support my decisions, but they will still worry about me, like how are people about your safeties are gonna be and there's no friends and why are you trying to leave Korea like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why so it's a sense of independence and it's making different cultures can't you get that here I'm not saying you have to stay by the way you're, oh yeah you, yeah. You, you can go, but like, <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. you can't get those experiences in Korea is it different yeah I think it is different because um, in if I live in Korea mm. and I try to do that thing um it's the same thing that i'm trying to achieve mm. but the method will be different because if i try to go abroad mm. then i have to start from nothing i have nothing i have no friends i have to start like i'm getting a house mm. and i have to get my job done and it will be such a struggle for me but mm. i believe that it will make me a better person and make me more independent and i do it in korea mm. it's very cool Sometimes the, the word <clears throat> expat gets used about like people like me being here. But I, I, I don't know if I get in trouble for saying this, but I genuinely sometimes think of myself as like, you know, when you hear stories of first uh, generation immigrants, Asian immigrants to Asia, and they open up like a, a laundrette or something or a convenience store or things like that. I feel like that here. I feel like a first generation immigrant and I, I, I work myself to the bone like I'm doing eight, nine jobs and I'm going at it from seven till 10 every day. I'm not living a luxurious like life. I'm, I'm getting to the bone, but I'm like because I'm trying to start something. I'm trying to put down from scratch. And there is that idea that you have to you know, really get at it. And there's there's a world of opportunity, I think, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's just being in that position. Um, what do you think about all this, Charlie? Yeah. Um, so I, I, w I wanted to uh, share a statistic is that in the past five, six years, you have like close to 20, 25,000 Koreans who have left Korea. Mm -hmm. So that's a very real substantial number. So it's not just people mentally checking out. There are actually bodies living, leaving this country. Probably would have been higher without COVID as well, I would right, imagine. Right. Yeah. yeah. And um, there are 
I think what needs to be said is Koreans, for the most part, really, I think they're afraid of speaking English. Mm. They're afraid to even um, attempt it. Mm. If you're in Seoul, I don't think that's the case. Like, if you ask someone for directions, they'll try to help you some mm. some way, somehow. But they're, they're terrified of, like, do, learning English, speaking English, or changing their ways. Mm. And... Um, so it's very difficult for Koreans to give up everything and move to other countries, but they still do it. And I am the result of that because both my parents left Korea when mm. they were 20 something to uh, look for better job opportunities, which is why I, I look somewhat Korean. I am Korean, but I speak English. I think in English. I dream mm. in English. So I think I have uh, a say in, like, I, I have both perspectives. And I think. People leave ultimately because they have no other choice, and if you if you are pressured enough by society, then you will end up leaving everything that you love behind mm. in search of a better life, and that's just what's happening to a lot of people, more and more. Was was it economic for your parents? I've never asked you about this before. Actually, you don't have to go into it too deep if you don't right. want. I I don't know because I guess it's different if you're living during the <laughs> the seventies, like Park Chung time, or if it's the early two thousands or something like that. I don't know. So my my dad uh, left to uh, get his master's degree. Okay. And then he met my mom, uh, because he was working part time as like a tour guide in in India at mm. the time, and she was um, a tourist. And then he hit on her, and then I was made on that day. <laughs> 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 so I, I was a mistake, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, as a result of living abroad for 20 years, I mm. feel like had I grown up here and not had the life that I had, mm. I would be exhausted. I'd, I definitely want to leave. Mm. But having the opportunities that I have now and then coming back to Korea with a completely different perspective, I mean, I, I'll get into it later with the later questions, but mm. I, would, I would never leave Seoul. Mm. I get anxiety just thinking about going on long-term trips to other countries. Mm. I was uh, recently, uh, I was in Bangkok for 10 days. Mm. And for the first time in my life, I understood why people like carry shinnamyeon with them when they're mm. going on trips, taking like bottles of soju with them. <laughs> I never understood that before, mm. and I got it now because day three I was really homesick, which is kind of crazy because you save up for years to go on a trip mm. like that. And, and you're still in Asia. I mean, it's not like the other side yeah, of the world, right? Yeah. yeah. And now I'm just I, I never want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> It's really interesting, the, the English part of that. So you started by talking about Korean people are scared of speaking English, right? Yeah. And you mm -hmm. said go abroad to learn English. How does the, the language go in it? Because I think, you know, we forget you guys can all speak English. Some Koreans cannot speak English at all, you know, and that must be one of the hard things. Like, yeah, one, how does English language come into this? Like, you want to go abroad because you can speak English? If you couldn't speak English, would you still go abroad or...? <laughs> Mm. What about yeah, going if... to Spain or something? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some cha cha cha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. 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 and that. Yeah. Um, I think like if I can't speak English, then mm. it will be such a struggle for me because I have to prepare for my English and learning language. Mm. It doesn't come like in just a short period of time, mm. so it will definitely take a lot of time and energy for me. So if I I'm not able to speak English that well, mm. then I might consider like I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna live in Korea, like mm. not leaving. Yeah. Mm. So sometimes it's an advantage because flipping it round, like Charlie was giving his perspectives, people like me, we get to come to Korea without knowing a lick of the language. We don't know any Korean, but we can come here and get jobs very easily with very few qualifications. So there's that sort of um, luck of the passport, I think. Like I, people like me, we're able to go the other side of the world don't have any skills we don't have anything but we can go and get a job whereas for you guys it's i guess it's a bit different right because the passports and the skills and the language that makes things a bit harder and that means it's more have so much more respect for you guys when you do it because our one's so much easier i think mm -hmm. thank you one of my friends said the exact same thing about going abroad for studies mm. and um actually she is studying english with me mm. from tomorrow and she's told me that she has thoughts of studying abroad for a semester or like two but she is not very um, confident of her English level and she doesn't does not really think that her English is um, 
enough for pass exams、mm. in English because she said that. Oh, I I struggle with Korean studies, but how how about like English? It would be worse,、mm. and that's one of the reason why she's、um, not really comfortable with another visiting another country for mm. studying. Mm. Mm. Yeah, when we were in Viet- Vietnam, my brother-in-law he would just go up to Vietnamese people and just start speaking Korean to them, <laughs> and、oh, I'm、wow. like, they don't speak your language. Like I'd have to try to help him and things like this, right? And that's when you realize, wow, the whole world is different. And you can go abroad and be successful without great English. Like, look at Ban Ki Moon's English or something <laughs> like that, man. Like, he's he he gets his articles and prepositions and juntisars and accent and and all that all over the place.、Mm. You need something, I think. But、um, yeah, Charlie said he loves living in Seoul. That's、like、good. it's the place、mm. he's become right like, like a real Joshi. He wants his soju and his shinlami and things like that. <laughs> it, it, there are things that Seoul. Like, how do you feel about living in Seoul? Like, will there be things? There must be some good things about living in this place, or is there not? I don't know. I think the safety and social welfare system, because、um, compared to other countries, especially like America,、mm. we have the best hospital services, and also we don't have to worry about. Being shot, <laughs> yeah,、That's、obviously. That's kind of nice thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we we do worry about like being late and we go home, but we don't have to worry about like being shot.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think compared to other countries,、mm. we have the best safety and social welfare system. This is what blows my mind because I look at America and I only access it through media, but I see like. Lots of stuff going on. I'm like, wow, that place like looks like it's struggling a little bit. Probably people think the same about Korea, but so many of the young women I teach, especially the young women at Seoul Women's University, they want to go abroad and they want to go to America.、Mm. That's the goal. And it's like, yeah, they have guns, yeah, they have drugs, yeah, they have all of these issues, but God damn it, I'm going and I'm leaving this place to go there. And it's genu, it's normally not Australia. They don't want to go to Denmark. They want to go to America. Seems to be the place. You want to go to America, Yeon? <laughs> yeah, I think it's related to the American dream, and、mm. because we learn,、um, we learn through education that in history America was the most strongest country in the、mm. world. So、mm. unconsciously, we think when we think of Western countries, we think of America, and we, when we think of、uh, foreigners, we think of American people. And when there's a white person going on, then we think, oh, he must be American like that.、Mm. <laughs> Yes. We don't think like if he's gonna be like Spanish or he can be like Tin or something. Yeah, yeah. right,、mm. right. And especially, I think that it's somehow related to ideological thing because、um, in the past in Korea there were like American military men's in Korea,、mm. and in the lecture I remember you telling that they were somehow the key to success、mm. to for some women to marry、uh, American men. And go abroad or something like that, and somehow that perspective just stays in our、um, mm, unconscious. Or yeah, unconsciously. Like unconscious. Yeah.、Mm. <clears throat> yeah. There must be lots of stories about that and things where they work and and it goes across. Yeah. yeah. Do you? How do you feel, Yunso, about this idea of Seoul being safe or good or、mm. like the the good things about living here? Um, especially for Seoul. Doongo, where I live, which is very near to my school, it's very quiet, and we have a、uh, very easy access to everywhere because metros be everywhere,、mm. and it's quite safe to be around everywhere during the night time.、Mm. Only thing I have to worry about is makcha, which which is the last train of the day, so that I can just come back to home, and I don't really feel a threat of like being. Um, killed or like attacked or something like that.、Mm. Very often, not very often. That's really nice. Yeah, it's nice if you can feel safe. Yeah, I is, think、yeah. that's、uh, you know, there's places that are not safe, and so many of the international students they come here and they're like, "Wow, this place is safe."、Mm. Yeah, that's why I have my kids here、mm. because、ah. it's pretty safe. I mean, the education is a bit brutal and things like that, but at least it's it's not soft education. It's not like they don't get education. That would be a worse problem, I think. Is there、um, like so? They're the they're the good things about living here. One of the w- things that、uh, I've heard this for a lot 
Dia, uh, she was a student in Seoul Yorte. She's from the Philippines, I think, if I get it right. Yeah. Some of the people that love living here is because you don't have to talk to anybody. Mm. They love, and they, they call themselves like introverts or neurodivergent, lots of different words, but they're like, I love Seoul because I don't have to say shit to anybody. Mm. I go and press a button to get my coffee and I go here and use my card. And in other countries, you have all this small talk, like, hey, good morning, how are you? <laughs> yeah, coffee, please. And here, they don't have to say anything. They don't have to use up their social battery and they love it because it's so quiet. Mm. Yeah, I, we have all the kiosks around the stores and we don't really have to talk about anything to workers or when we are in the line yeah. when someone comes to me and say something I would be terrified because <laughs> oh are they Saibi or something like that yeah. <laughs> Chari you have any word on this um, there's no there's no small talk in Korea you just stay out of people's business you don't go alright mate how's See, the weather I mean when you're in the States they talk to you but I always ask myself if I didn't have to tip these guys would they be as nice to me mm. <laughs> yeah. and um, I'm not saying that everyone is born like a terrible person I'm sure there are some people who genuinely want to make small talk I I don't like making small talk I, you can probably tell from the way I look but, <laughs> but I want to say to all the Koreans who are hating on this place, yeah. if they have really, if you really think about the average human experience on this earth, mm. it's it's not great, right? Like you have one billion people living in poverty, and you have s some people who you know don't have access to very very basic things. Mm. Korea, for me, Seoul, for me especially. It's it's I know it's a very unpopular opinion. It's the best city in the world for for me. Mm. Um, I, I I can get out of my house at one a.m. and I have a variety of choices uh, from anything from like tteokbokki to burgers or whatever I want mm. to eat. I can get food from any convenience store that's like a minute away. Mm. Um, I can drink all night, and uh, my friends won't be worried about mm -hmm. whether I'm. An alcoholic. That I think is that I think is problematic. Koreans are way too um, okay with everyone being uh, like everyone just being okay with soju and mm. the drinking culture being a very real part of our culture. Mm. But um, Koreans work hard and they play harder than any other uh, than anyone else that I know, mm. and I think. That's just a result of our person, uh, our personality as a people. We're very, pali pali. We're very like we have an urgency to get things done on time, even though there's no need to get it done on time so fast. But if you can accept all of those things, then Seoul is a safe place. It's all it's a place where you have a lot of opportunities, and maybe it's difficult to you know, survive here financially. But you know, the commute is not that difficult either. Mm. Um, the subway system it gets crowded at times but at least it's there mm. right? it exists mm. um, so I'm I try to think about living here in a positive light mm -hmm. at times it's difficult but I am going to be the one person defending the city <laughs> no I, I, I'm with you right now. <laughs> I'm defending it. so I, I learned from you and so I think the word uh, the yeah. hell thing mm. but uh, the, the hell subway but at least it's always on time like it's not like you know when it's coming and it mm. navigates and things like this for you, which is not the same in other places. So I guess I'll, I'll open this one. Is there a gender thing going on? I don't know if there is. It's just a genuine question. Is there a thing where this place is pretty good if you're a man and, and we experience it and if you're some women as well? But is it different for women, do you think? Do they feel it differently? Not all women, but is there a, is there a gender vibe going on? I think that I can say it by there are like apartments near our school, which mm. is for only women mm. because um, I live in women only apartment because there were like all of the um, all of the apartments were women only our near our school. I didn't know there's women only apartments. Oh, as well. really? This is the first time I've heard of this. Really? So How do they do it? Like it's you can't come in if you're not. We are not supposed to bring our fathers or boyfriends inside our apartments and no man can live in there. Can yeah. you have a male dog? Maybe. Are these like what they call Yosong or something? Yeah, like? Yosong Jonyong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so that um we can feel much safer because mm. there are like all the women's going around that area. Mm. And the real estate 
manager told me that oh this is a women only apartment so it's safe and people like it and they feel more like comfortable around there mm. and for her it was their brag to have a women only apartment and if there's a man stranger around there <laughs> we somehow get a little bit worried because um yeah sometimes there are strange people in the world how do, yeah how do you know it's a women only apartment Um, like, are there signs on it or are they labeled? I'm just wondering, like, just in case you're standing outside on the street one day smoking a cigarette or something, <laughs> but it's outside a woman's only apartment and they're all looking at you like, <laughs> are they signposted or? Um, not really, but um, there is an app called Every Time, which uh -huh. is like university students community thing. And we all um, abstractly know about the women only apartment. So we are not really supposed to bring our male friends around there mm -hmm. and the real estate manager would tell you when you sign on the paper. Are they more expensive? Not Because really. Because they're women only? There's not a price, there's not a pink tax on them or something? Um, Not really. It's, okay. yeah, not very more expensive. Been here 20 years, the first time <laughs> I've ever heard of women only apartments. Are they male only apartments? I don't see why there would be one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit different. It? Yeah, it's called the military. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when is there a gender thing going on? Like, is it a case of men feel more comfortable here than women? Or is it just habasa? Is it just, it depends on the person. I think it depends on the person. Yeah. Like, if you're a woman, but if you um, just go home by like 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. or something, and you don't really go out, then mm. you won't feel like that threatened or mm. something. But if you are a woman who goes to clubbing and other stuffs and goes to home at like 1 a.m., and then you will have some stops to say about Korea's safety and how she wants to live abroad because of safety reasons or other stuff. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It feels like... It's interesting that it's Sabasa and the way you describe these things. When I looked at the responses on Instagram and feels uh, uh, and the ones that I got in, it felt like, and maybe this is biased because I'm at a women's university, it was more women that want to leave than men. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting. Men also have to do the military and things like that. Does doing the military make you want to leave or stay? Because we talked to that guy last semester who was like, I don't know whether I should stay here or not because I like it, but if I stay, I have to do my military or I can go. And this is for people with mixed nationalities, right? But how, how does that military thing work with staying and going? Um, I, I think leaving Korea to go to another country just to save one and a half years of your life, which which isn't great. I mean, like giving mm. up, you're giving up uh, a year and a half, basically two years, you're pushing it back. Mm. You're pushing a graduation date back. You're basically giving up your social life and your dating life for for two years. But I guess it does kind of incentivize those international Koreans to kind of give up their nationality. Mm. And I heard that that was in becoming an uh, increasingly bigger case since there are significantly more international Koreans now than there were 50 years ago. Mm. Or like, you know, 78 years ago when the military first uh, became a thing. But... Um, I do agree that I think most of my friends who want to leave Korea, they are women. Mm. They are my female friends, and none of my guy friends seem to want to leave. So maybe the Korean men are the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but that wouldn't make it, that. I think what's interesting is that's not going to solve the problem. Right. Yeah, and it, it maybe it's just a psychological thing. I'm not sure why. This is a reality that I've seen so, so much, whereas I've, I've taught people through Solio there for like four years from freshman to, to graduation. And I know them and I, I spend time with them, teaching them over a prolonged period. And they're generally like very nice, quiet, conservative people. And you don't hear much from them and you see them on social media. And then they go to America and their Insta is like bikini photos and let's go and crop tops. And they're like, mm, yeah. And there's this huge change. And the, it's almost like they're not the same person. This doesn't happen with all of them, of course. But and it might only be what I see because I'm a professor. Like I don't get to see everything. They have their uh, secondary accounts and things like that. But I see this huge change in people from when they're here sometimes and when they go abroad, they become like a. I don't know, something different. Mm. They become more out of their shell. Like they're here, but they're nameshison or they're nunti. Mm. They, they feel trapped by something. Yeah. Is, is that real? I think 
that's because there's a phenomena in like Korean society like mm. when you show off your bodies or like wear bikini pictures you might get criticized for being to um, showing your bodies too much mm. and you care about them uh, other people's dunchi mm. but when you go abroad and there's no one to look at you and there's no one that knows you so you can just start your new personality and become your new self so i think it's kind of making you as a new you like new personality and new identity mm. Mm. a lot of women gain weight as well i don't mean that in a bad way but i think they don't feel pressured to be mm. as thin they get mm. to a more like you know we i think we have a distorted view mm. sometimes of what's thin here because of K-pop and celebrities and things like that. It's like, mm. oh my God, I've got to be like that. And <laughs> normal people sometimes don't always look like that. And mm. they, they gain five or 10 kilos and it's a bit different. Mm. Yeah. Maybe their changes would be because of another nunchi in there because somehow they would be worried about seeing seeming as nerdy, mm -hmm. as like conservative people. So mm. they change their styles and change their acting skills. Not for everyone, but I guess... Because I think that if I were to go to um, abroad for studying for one semester or two semester, I would change my whole clothes to that style. Mm. And I would go out with my friends and learn how they act. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's my mini opinion. Yeah. Right. You don't have to. What would your boyfriend say if you told him you were going abroad for a couple of semesters? Would he be like, <laughs> go, girlfriend? Or would he be like, oh. He would literally cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing, I think. That means, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. If you flip it, how do you feel about foreigners coming here? Like, so we've been talking a little bit about, you know, Korean people wanting to leave. Some Korean people want to stay. This is Seoul. This is amazing. A lot of people want to come here. And like you've been around international students and things like this. What, what do you see amongst people that come here, the international students and how they react and how they describe it to you? Because there's people coming from Southeast Asia and there's people coming from China. And there's people coming from Japan. Uh, but there's also people coming from North America and Europe. How do you see those people coming here? Because a lot of those people are like, this place is great. I want to live here. What's your reaction with foreigners coming into Korea? First impression is... I'm very interested in mm. them because I'm very curious about how they perceive Korea. And when I talk to them, I get very surprised because they always seem to have the positive aspect of Korea. So when I talk to them, they say like, oh my God, this samgyeopsal is so delicious. And I love the food and the safety and the clothes are good. I like the place. Mm. And yeah, they're very positive. Yeah. Yeah. And they're trying to fit in the society quite very much because sometimes they say 안녕하세요 better than me. Mm. <laughs> like they always say 안녕, 안녕하세요, 안녕히 계세요, the greetings, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. even diligently more than me. Every time they leave the store, leave the restaurant. Mm. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of get what you mean. I don't really say 안녕하세요. I just say 안녕하세요. Yeah. 안녕하세요, something like that. It's just yeah. really yeah, the contracted, contracted thing. Yeah. Mm. I will say, mm. uh, I think when foreigners come here, they get the best version of Seoul. So they're also often um, fueled by soju because, you know, exchange students love to drink. Mm -hmm. At least my, my friends who are exchange students love to drink. And so they get the best of the nightlife. They experience a new level of safety, which some of them just, you know, honestly don't have back in their home countries. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so all of that is great, but when they say they want to move here, uh, this, I will say, I don't think that that's true if they knew the whole truth. Mm. Um, Koreans aren't as welcoming to foreigners as, uh, as people think, and um, that obviously is an issue. I think racism exists in almost every part of the world, but it mm. also exists here. Mm. And I don't know why people seem to think that that's not the case, because uh, Seoul has some pretty international locations like Itaewon and Hongdae, but that's a very small uh, fragment of Korea. Mm -hmm. And if you want to really live here long term, then you have to either adapt yourself and change yourself to fit into you know Korea's society, 
And I think it's a lot easier for Koreans to go to another country and reinvent themselves mm-hmm. than for foreigners to come here and then learn every single thing that you have to do right in this country. I'm sure you've experienced that yourself coming here. Um, I think it's easy to live here and be like a, a, a Juingong or main character syndrome or something because if you're a teacher or a professor, but even if you're a teacher, right, you're the smartest person in the class all the time. You're the funniest person in the class. And when you go to where or when you go to restaurants, you get to sit next to the sajang nim of the hagwon or something like this. And you don't have to worry about politics and taxes and all this bullshit. You just ignore it and you get to just walk in your own world. So I think it's easy if you don't try to get into the culture. Mm-hmm. Mm. But you reckon it's... It, I, and I think Korea lets you do that to a certain extent. Yeah. It's, I, I suppose... But that's if you're white. I think if you come from Southeast oh, Asia, yeah, absolutely. That if if I go to a, a person and in Korea and start speak to them, they'll try to speak to me in English. Yeah. I think. But if a Southeast Asian person goes to a Korean, they'll be like, they "Speak Korean. Mm-hmm. This is Korea." Yeah. I think there's a difference depending on identity. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. I think white pass is real. Mm-hmm. Like if you are trying to get a job as a foreigner when you just come to Korea, and then you can be. Um, do you want to become a model like to a white people? But mm. I don't think many companies will hire some Chinese people or other Indonesian people. Mm. Yeah. My mind is immediately going to Lisa and New De- Vietnam and all of that. It's good in the K-pop thing because mm-hmm. they have that Asian body. Mm. Yeah. I think so too because in the English Institute, in English Hagwons for elementary schoolers, mm. there are, are like English-speaking teachers, but... We cannot really see um, Asian-looking people yeah. people in there because mm. there are like plenty of um, Asian-looking English-speaking nationality people, right? Mm. For example, sure. um, Philippine people are very good at speaking English, and Asian people could born and raised there in the English culture. But um, as I remember, there were only one black teacher in my hagwon, and rest of them was all white. Mm. And that seems a little bit racist when I grow up and turn back on it. Mm. Mm. It's weird. Yeah, maybe I perceive it wrong because I've never really perceived Korea as racist, but it's not my position to say. But I've always, I mean, I go back to the first line of the Analects, which is like, I think it sums up Korea so much. Confucian Analects, first line is, is it not a great pleasure to study and remember what you have learned? And is it not a great pleasure to meet friends who have come from far away? And it's like, Jesus Christ, Koreans love studying and remembering stuff and, and, and meeting people. I find them quite welcoming, mm. genuine. But I think that's maybe just my experience. Mm. I tend to look for the positive stuff sometimes. <laughs> and I always go and talk to people. I don't know why, but I go up to them. And say, oh. <laughs> like, what, are you, what are you doing? I'm an introvert as well, but I like to... Um, somebody accused me of showing off or something but it's not showing off I'm just always curious what people are doing why are you doing that what's going on who are you tell me a story tell me something about the Pak Chang year or tell me something <laughs> about like what do you eat for dinner like, what, what do you drink yeah I was curious about it yeah I think maybe you get a positive experience because of your social status mm. and also um, it relates to your white pasting. So mm. if you come to a restaurant, then people will think, what is he doing? He's a foreigner and he's he seems to be uh, having a good clothes. He seems very put together. So I think there's a reason why he came to Korea and tried to speak to you. But if there's like Chinese people or mm. other like Asian people coming to Korea, then other people might assume, oh, that person is trying to do a labor here. So they don't like respect as much as they respect you mm, 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 mm. yeah i don't always look like this year one <laughs> <laughs> you should see me when i'm hung over or just walking down the street with my baseball cap just going oh my god i feel rough and uh sometimes i like playing with people like if they'll they'll ask me what i do they might even a taxi driver might just go and i just like yeah yeah, just play with them. My my Indian friend, he would often tell people, he, and he's a professor, he's smarter than me, he would often tell people that he was a factory worker just to see how they treated him. And I'm just sitting there going, oh, this is amazing. You get to play and get all these different reactions, right? Mm. I, I'm still curious then how, how media affects all this. Like, because I, I, I think we all, we all have these realities of Korea that we live 
and, and Charlie has his and, and Yoon So has hers with uh, women's apartments and being safe and Charlie can get drunk when there's soju and do all these things and it's safe. And you have yours. Does the media get Korea right? When I'm thinking about sort of YouTube and Insta and things like that, I'm so interested these days in the difference between reality and the perceived reality or the social media reality. For you, in your just day-to-day -day lives, like, does, does the media get Korea right? Time to time, but mm. I think it depends like which media it is. Mm. Like for example, if you take a Korean media, they will try to show you the positive aspects of Korea, like K-pop, BTS, and New Jeans and stuff. Mm. But we tend to hide the negative stuff. But when you go through the foreign uh, YouTube channel that reflects Korea, you can sometimes find that they are um, exaggerating too much. Mm both in positive ways and negative ways. So in a negative ways, they focus on the negative sides of Korea too much, like for example, body shaming or stuff. And sometimes it's not that deep, but all the comments and YouTube videos tend to say like, it's really a thing, big thing in Korea. And mm. if you want to come to Korea, you have to do a diet and stay in shape, but it's not that deep, but all the comments are saying like, it's real. Mm. So they exaggerate, but also on the positive side, there are some foreigners who get so um, excited about K-pop and BTS. So they ignore the negative parts and say, oh, all the Korean people are so good looking and I love Korea. Mm. Is body shaming still a thing? Like, I don't know because I'm not a young woman, but I'm at the stage now where if a student walks into the lecture hall and she's got like dyed her hair yellow, I'm not going to say anything now because it's like you shouldn't say something about a woman's appearance and things like that. It feels I maybe I'm being oversensitive, but I, I don't sort of comment on people's appearances too much anymore because I feel like oh, I sh shouldn't do that, David. <laughs> when I first came, everybody was talking about it. Oh, David, you look tired. You look smart. You look good. How do you? And it was all there. And I, I'm not sure. Is it still a thing? Appearance? I guess it is, but on the media. OK. Um, because like there are like personal color thing or per personal body structure thing going on SNS nowadays. They even have your like desired outfits for your bone structure and you have to match the color that you like. And you have to do like blush applies on your cheekbone or under your cheekbone kind of like that. That's so micro. Mm. But people don't really throw shade on people like on person to person um, conversations. And what's personal structure? Personal color, I've heard about. Personal color, and mm. some people have like wider hips than another people, uh -huh. or like broader shoulder kind of thing, and they they seem like rectangular, like hourglass kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Have you done figures. either of these, the personal color test or the personal structure? Um, for me, I didn't take the personal color test because yeah. um, I felt like that's trapping me somehow. Mm. mentally mm. for like oh i should apply like orange colored lips because i can cannot wear pink ones kind of like that mm. that's so tiring but many of my friends have done it and they even buy cosmetics based on that yeah and they feel insecure if they do not really wear that shade so yeah it was interesting to know that mm. Mm. I, I wore a pink jacket the other day and someone came up to me and go, Professor, did you do the personal color test? I was like, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm just weird. Like, <laughs> yeah, what, have you done a personal color test? Personal no. structure? No, no. <laughs> but I want to. Oh, you want to? Okay. I want to get a personal color test, yeah. but not personal structure test. Okay. Yeah. I want to get a personal color test because I know what colors match me, but I want to get analyzed by a professional. Mm. So if I get like, oh, this is your color, then I can wear these when I have to go on important places. Mm. Mm. How does the personal color test work? Is that an MBI test or do you do it one on one with a person or do they sit with you or is it like, what, how do you do it? A professional artist sits you on the chair and yeah. they um, remove all your hair like this with a white um textile yes. yeah. and you wear like white gowns or something like yeah. that so that yeah. you you don't see any like hairs or clothes from your yeah. and they um compare your um face color mm. um even though it, it looks vivid or dull you look tired your dark circles are revealing yeah. with the textiles under your face yeah. and they they throw shade on you like yeah. oh yeah with this color you look tired with this color your dark circles 
show with this. Your cheekbones are ugly. <laughs> they do that. <laughs> We pay yeah. to get to get shade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they give you the solution at the yeah. end. Yeah, so you've got to do this. I see how that works. It's very clever. Yeah. How, how much does it cost? Pretty、Roughly. expensive. Is it like fifty? Is it like Omanon? Is it like Saman Shimanon? What? I guess it's different where you go, but I have no idea. Yeah, but I heard that expensive ones go、mm. over、uh, ten. Ten thousand ones. Oh wow. Manon, big manon, shimano. Oh no, no, shimano. Shimano, hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah, like hundred dollars or something like this. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Charlie, like appearance. I mean, do, do you do you feel like、uh, you can be your your you let your true colors shine here, sweetheart? I mean, <laughs>、um, I, I guess like as a result of you know, I'm often. The only person I think on in class who has tattoos a lot of the times, really big. Ta- I think lots of people have them like here、yeah, and here visible and ones. here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And How many have you got now? I, I don't、I'm, roughly. I think close to twenty, but I'm getting a couple more. And I think for me, it's just really liberating because I just want to wear what I want to wear.、Mm-hmm. And、um, what's great about just you know being Like not giving a shit about other people's dunchi、mm. is, you can just kind of be happy with whatever you want to be that day. Yeah. And so often I'm hungover, then I'm just I just want to be hungover that day. I don't I don't have any added pressure to put like you know look put together or anything. And I get that that's、uh, my privilege as a guy being a male.、Mm. I get that you know girls have a much more rigorous process of getting ready. But um. Yeah, I I feel like Koreans really really put so much importance on their appearance,、mm-hmm. and like they could be having the worst day of their lives, and you'd never know. Because I think one thing that Koreans do really well is they never let anyone else know that they're really struggling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like you you don't know if this person is like struggling financially, if their family member or friend has recently died. They're just put together, and they'll go home and you know suffer in in silence, and. Uh, it's so important to be put together here that if you just if you go out、um, on the streets, everyone is you know always dressed to the nines. They're really really fit. I don't、mm-hmm. I don't understand how everyone is so fit because it took me a lot of effort to lose a lot of weight that I used to have, <laughs> which you remember I'm sure. Yeah 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 yeah. But everyone gets there. Everyone、um, looks put together and.、Um, I think that is a result of we're coming back to media,、mm-hmm. and the media has such a huge influence over what people think and how they behave.、Mm-hmm. How, how, do, how do people react to your tattoos if you're sitting like that? Because they always used to be for the older generation. Like I say this, my wife, <laughs> my wife, for example, she calls them munchin still,、yeah. which is the older word for it. Like you know, the branding and it's associated with、uh, gangsters, especially、yeah. the back tattoos, right? So. How do people react to your tattoos these days? They totally cool with it, or they look at you funny, give you the side eye. It actually、uh, made my dating life actually quite quite difficult. Okay. And、um, but、um, at the end of the day, it's for me.、Uh, I don't want to associate myself with people who you know make、uh, who who have an idea of who I am based on my appearance because、mm. that's not what I do,、mm. I, and that's not what anyone should do. And so, even if your social circle is small, if it's real,、mm. then、um, I'm happy with that. And I think that's something that everyone should, you know, try to look into. Your girlfriend have tattoos? And that's a real personal question. She just got one a few days ago,、okay. actually. But when she first saw me, she said that, "Oh, you know, like、uh, I didn't think you were a university student. I was, you know, almost certain you were affiliated with, you know." Shady stuff. But <laughs>、well, she meant that, you know, jokingly. But、yeah. but I get it. I, I get why people, you know, think the way they do.、Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, I guess nowadays more people are dressing the way they want. They're、mm-hmm. getting tatted up. They're doing what they want.、Um, and I think it's good to be free in that sense. And I hope Korea moves in that direction. Yeah. Not the other way. And it's it's good that you feel the ability to do that. I struggle as an old guy, especially with like footballers, when they have tattoos below the wrists and above the neck. Yeah, that's hard for me because I've always been around musicians and artists and tattoos up the arms and legs. I've always seen them. I don't have any myself, but there was always this kind of like unwritten rule that if you wanted to work, it shouldn't be 
uh, below the wrist or above the neck and then you'd be fine. But now people get them behind the ears. You look at Post Malone or things like this. It's, it's really out there. I thought having tattoos would make dating easier. Because if you've got tattoos and you, and you see somebody else with tattoos, you're like, oh, we've got something going on. <laughs> <clears throat> that, would, that would make it. Mm. What's the um, <clears throat> comparison culture like? Does, does, is that a real thing? Because Charlie's talking and he, he walks around, he doesn't care how he looks, he just does what he wants. I I don't really compare myself to other people too much. It, I don't know why. Maybe I've just got old. Maybe I did it when I was in my 20s and I don't think about it as much. But I hear that comparison culture is a real thing. But I'm just curious, how does it feel? Because at school, at university, you know like your level, you know your grade, you're, you're being judged against other people. And when I judge university students, I have to not grade them according to their own ability, but grade them, what is it, like, Jol de Pyeongka and Bide Pyeongka, something like that? Mm -hmm. What one is it? Sang de Pyeongka. Right, 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 that one, thank you. Sang de Pyeongka. I have to judge them against each other. Mm. Is, is comparison culture, like, Bigyo Munwa or whatever it might be, what do you call it? Does it have a word? Mm. Or is it I just a it's feeling? Just... It's just a vibe. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. guess. About the comparison culture, mm. I think it exists in Korea, and that's something that many people struggle with. Mm. But I don't think like it's just Korea who struggle with because all the countries have comparison cultures, and mm, I think it is changing in Korea right now. People tend to not care about other people's nunchi these days, so I think it is real and it exists, but it's not that deep. Mm. You feel it? Um, so? Yeah, for me, um, I value school, university level a lot. So I wanted to ask you guys about, like, do you compare your university rankings to another people you met? I don't know there were rankings. It's because he's Yeah. <laughs> so to be honest, when I heard he goes to Hanyangde, I thought that, oh, so, like, he goes to a better school than me, so he must be, like, very smarter than me <laughs> somehow for the record that's not true <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you at the end of semester once i get your grades <laughs> so yeah those the school rankings uh. and um some people compare themselves to celebrities about their like body shapes or appearances mm. but nowadays people are finding their own beauties which is good um yeah but for studying, I think that the comparison is still there because, like you mentioned, Sangdepyeongka thing, we got the grades by comparing with other students. So it's in our blood. Mm -hmm. It's not our like decision. It's just yeah. Sometimes with the the university thing, I'll be at events and um, my my business cards say Seoul Women's University, and sometimes people will take one. They'll give me their card and they'll take one. They're talking to me and then they see my card and they're like, ah. Oh. Mm. It's not as interesting to them. It doesn't carry, uh, this is no disrespect to our university because I love it. Uh, thank you very much, Sol <laughs> Um But it doesn't carry that respect that if you're talking that they're used to like Yonsei or, or mm. Seoul De or Korea University, something like that. I can see their countenance and their vi visual expression change when they realize I'm so women's university. I'm like, oh, I, don't, mm. I don't give a crap. Man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all good, but for some people, it's very real. Yeah. University level. Mm. I remember... One time we were talking about a strange person. I don't remember the exact situation, but we all heard that he or she goes to Korea or Yonsei University, and we all went, "Oh, okay, she, she or he is good. He's good." Okay. Mm. Mm. Oh, and also one time, um, some guy asked for my number, and he just his pickup line was this: "I go to Seoul University." <laughs> <laughs> it was his pickup line. He Did just it said, work? Yeah, <laughs> "No." <laughs> It's a huge <laughs> ache. Yeah, he just came up to me and said, I go to Seoul, Seoul University. <laughs> so I was like, well, so why? Uh, what, would this, what would be a good pickup line? Yeah, <laughs> Not that, just yeah, not that. Maybe just like genuinely yeah. ask me, like, I think you're beautiful. Can I get your number? Then that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's quite old fashioned. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> how, it, that's how it should be done. Yeah. Do you get the... <laughs> What I, what I find really interesting, like Charlie mentioned this early when he was talking about the older generation grew up in much more, they grew up in poverty, much more. But yet, even though they grew up in poverty, the gap between the rich and the poor wasn't as big. 
right? That it, it was smaller. So although they were they were poorer than you, they were relatively less poor than the people around them. There was an equality in the poverty, almost. Of course, there were still very rich people and very poor people. How, how do you feel about that today? So we talked a little bit about gender and living here and those kind of things. What about that kind of rich, poor thing? I was reading this uh, bit by Nietzsche. I, I, don't want, I won't go into Nietzsche too long, but he was saying that the way a society needs to stay together if it doesn't revert into uh, communism, which was his big fear at the end of the sort of 1800s, early 1900s, was that the rich people have not, shouldn't do these big ostentatious displays of wealth the rich people have got to keep their money to themselves otherwise the poor people will be jealous and then they will demand it and then they will overthrow them that's a weird tangent to bring this in but how do you feel about comparisons between rich and poor like do you see it do you feel it is it harder i went to buy tamchi gimbo it's ocho no big one i can't believe that that's really hard even for me i'm mm -hmm. like jesus christ five five bucks for some gimbo man that's hard I think that younger people want to be seen as uh, rich people, even if they are not. Mm. And maybe that's why the old fa old money look aesthetic catched on like last year or something like that. And there is a term that called small luxury, which means that a lip balm or hand cream from a luxury brand would be not very expensive as a mm. bag, right? Mm. So they can carry their brand with them with a pretty reasonable price and they can they can be seen as classy person with luxury mm. and which is the way of showing off their wealth. Nowadays I see those a lot. Even middle school students carry Dior <laughs> lip balms and the Chanel things, which is um, a very very um interesting you but feel any pressure to have a louis vuitton bag or a chanel bag <laughs> but with, like visibly that with the labels on not uh, bag but somehow with the cosmetics because mm. um many of my friends would use specific brands of lip lip cosmetics mm. and if i don't really have one i would see them as old-fashioned kind like that and um last year apollo cardigan catched on it was a trend and everyone was wearing it, and I felt a little bit of a pressure of, oh, should I buy one to to get fit in or what something? What does the like polo that? cardigan look like? Um, it's related. Like, you mean to it's a polo neck but a cardigan at the same no, time? No, no, it's the brand polo. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, you're right. I the get cardigan you, I get just you. fits yeah, yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So I think that's where the comparison culture goes. Oh, in. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Uh. People compare each other from like trends and um, if they see the difference between their um, desired aesthetics they change themselves and that's why the fast fashion in Korea catches on mm. Mm. I think the aesthetics in Korea there's generally a set look it's not very colorful mm. like when I walk along the campuses whether it's at Soryo there or Hanyang there when I walk along the street there's generally not much color mm. It's not like people are wearing like black uh, pinks and blues and reds and things like that. Generally, everything's quite sort of black and white and safe and things like that to not stand out. I don't know if that's me not seeing the color because I'm getting old and colorblind or something. But it feels like when I'm in different countries and different places, people are a bit more sort of out there with their colors. That might just be me. I agree with you because... Mm. Um, the most popular color amongst my friend is gray or blackish color mm. because they don't really want to seen as a very, mm, you know, attention seeking people mm. by wearing vivid color. Mm. My wife hates me. <laughs> She's like, she don't wear that. You're not wearing that. <laughs> Why not? I want to wear something. Man. Mm. Just, because that was my culture growing up. And it, I can't get used to the Korean one. Right. I just have to be like that. Yeah. Oh, and I also think the reason why Korean people wear more black and white and gray mm. is because wearing that is considered more stylish than wearing mm. pink and sky blue sweaters like that. It's also gray. very thinning. Mm, I understand. Yeah. I mean, if you wear black and things like that, it looks much thinner, I think. Mm. Yeah. Um, what would you... What would you say to someone thinking about moving to Korea? I'm just jumping through some of these, but um, like... Let's let's start with this. What would you say to someone thinking of moving to Korea and then someone thinking of leaving Korea? So if people are going to move here and I met somebody on Tuesday, she's 
uh, from the Netherlands. She's in her 60s. She fell in love with BTS during the pandemic. Her bag was full of, t especially sugar, right? She's all into him. She's married. She's got a daughter as well. But she's like, yeah, this is the place. Here we go. And she's she feels the pull of it, right? She feels the pull of Korea. These old people and young people. Yunso, what would you say to people thinking of moving to Korea? Would you be like, come to us. We welcome you. <laughs> <laughs> um, for temporarily, I, I would recommend coming to Korea and especially Seoul is a great place to live if you have enough money to live in. But if you are broke, Seoul is not a very good place to live in. But if you plan to visit or like temporarily be in Korea, the thing that you should learn is greeting words like 안녕하세요, 감사합니다. Then Koreans would accept you and welcome you. And if they, if you learn a single word in Korean, they would say, oh, your Korean is so good. You're so fluent. Oh, I love you kind of stuffs. Mm. So, yeah, I recommend visiting Korea. How, mm. how I, this is very like kind of personal. How bad is the money thing at the moment? Like you mm. said, if you're broke, don't come here. If you're rich, broke and rich mean different things to different people. Mm. Right? We all have different standards. Can you kind of maybe, I don't know, describe or how hard is it these days or it's okay? Or what's mm. it like being a student? Um, for me, my parents pay the rent. But when I imagine I had to pay a rent, I would be so depressed about like earning money and the, all the money that I get goes mm. to the rent. Mm. And I don't really have my money to at least have my life. Mm. For example, like if I spend all my money to the rent and I have only ramen to eat, and I don't really get to enjoy a cup of coffee or like tr mini travels mm. or go to concerts, mm. that would be so depressing. And that is not the shade of soul that they imagine to live in, right? Mm. So yeah, if you're broke, do not really come to Korea. <laughs> it's amazing that that's when we go to Vietnam and we can like, rent Mercedes to drive us around for the day and things like that with a driver and it's like some man on like, oh. yeah this is worth it and think no your money goes so far in Vietnam you see these huge prices and you, it's like millions of dong and you're like oh my god and then you realize wait we can flex this so easily there's, there's a big difference when you go there Charlie what do you say to people coming thinking about coming to live in Korea um, so it's very difficult to get a non-English teaching job. So that's that's one thing. I think that's mm -hmm. the most popular, like, uh, that's the most popular way of getting into the country to live here on a, by getting a visa. Yeah. And it's, uh, this was mentioned earlier, it's just true that they prefer uh, white teachers. And um, a lot of my English teacher friends, <coughs> there are some, you know, academies that don't have any, you know, that have that have any teachers that are from that are not from the UK or from the states, mm -hmm. so it's difficult to get in here, and then it's even more difficult to survive once you're here. So come visit, give it a shot if you like it, and if you really want to, you know, live here, you definitely have to learn the language, and you would have to pretty much give up everything. But if it's worth it to you, then you know, uh, it's it's got everything. It's a great place to live. Say something about learning the language. So Cause you've probably gone through a little bit. It would have been different, I think. But say something about that. Yeah, uh, Korean is it's deceptively easy because it's so easy to learn how to read. You yeah. could do it in thirty. You could do it in thirty minutes, even yeah. though it's a like a new. It's a completely different alphabet from the ones that we're used to. But then you, it gets complex because it has roots to Chinese, and it's really difficult to figure out the spacing and the spelling i still get it wrong every day um it's it's i'll tell you how difficult it is when i message my girlfriend i have to google check one out of every three sentences <laughs> to see if it's right or wrong because i don't want to seem stupid yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how tough it is but in english you would never have to worry about that mm. the language is difficult so when you want to come here and speak the language you really have to give it 110 percent it's not like English where you can just learn a few sentences and get by. It's not a get by language. You need to know. You really have to dive deep into it. Mm. It's so bloody hard yeah, to language. <laughs> and it's not an intellectual battle. It's not something that you can sit and work out a theory or a, yeah. like a sociological concept. This is something that just takes like 
years and humility and you have to like i'm smart but i have to learn sentences like i am sad you know yeah. you have to go right down to the baby level originally to to then build it up yeah i like it that when it does get into the once you get past the reading you get past that stage when you get into sort of like an intermediate stage where you start learning the um the hanja and the concepts and i love that part of it uh, this week maybe it was last week this week i learned the word choshim Mm. I was like, ah, oh, like cho, like chorong hakyo, like cho, and then shim, like this shim one. So it's eyes like beginner energy. Yeah, it's fantastic when you get to that level. I'm like, wow, man, that's great. It's like Lego. Let's put them together. <laughs> and I put some of them together, and my teacher's like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, just like the term tarjo, so you can put tar everywhere, just, just like oh, a yeah, Lego. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Tar podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, one uh, yes. people. What would you say to people coming to live in Korea? I would say <laughs> just stay in your country <laughs> <laughs> because I'm coming there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because we. I'm going abroad. So <laughs> well, if that's what they want, like mm -hmm. they love the Korean culture and everything, then sure they could come to Korea. But if you know Korea to a certain level, just the surface of it, then you will like Korea because you are just visiting Korea and you're just like seeing Gyeongbokgung and stuff and there's all the good stuff there. But inside, you know there's some deep culture and you know that Korean is, has a highly um, high text culture. Mm -hmm. So it's quite very hard to become like really accepted to the society. Mm -hmm. So I think the foreigner who come to Korea and start to live in there will feel they are being excluded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it's you'll never fully be accepted if you come here. Yeah, even though you will get a citizen mm -hmm. thing, but you will think like you are still not a citizen. Mm -hmm. I get it. I've always been a fan of the um, the expression. I can't remember where it's from. Society prospers when people plant trees under whose shade they will not sit. And so sometimes you have to do things for the benefit of other people that won't benefit you. You might not get the benefits from this thing, but generations down the line will reap the benefits. And I think this is, say, for example, with LGBT people that come out early and like they get discriminated against and they suffer and it's hard for them but slowly it helps society like open up and do things that's just one example the others can be with sort of the environment or things we always want our own benefits um there was horace underwood who who lived here with his family horace underwood the third his family started yonsei university in the 1890s and then he heard the third he was at the korean armistice he was the translator between the chinese army and the american army he was there right he was the translator for the war documents and lived here his whole life and in his autobiography which he wrote 2000 i think that year he said i've been here my whole life like knows the country the language his family has built the institutions and at the end he said but i'll never be korean I'm always a little bit outside. He joked about his nose not being quite right. Mm. And I looked at that and I thought, that was in 2000. Mm. Now we're in 2024. And, you know, people like me, maybe getting there, what it would be like in 2040 and 2050 and 2060. It's like maybe when Korean people first went to America, they were treated pretty badly, right? Mm. And now they can be in Marvel movies and things like that. They can be like Lee jong in Star Wars or stuff like that. So I, th I think, you know, sometimes we do things for benefits beyond us. Might be kind of interesting. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, do there's... Feel, oh, sorry. Oh, no, you, go, go, you go first. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel there's definitely a change. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But whether it can fully materialize, I'm not sure. Right? Mm. I, I'm not sure, but yeah. Mm. I remember you saying that you have the right to vote in Korea. Yeah. And that means you are part of the citizen technically and i wanted to ask you if do you feel embraced in korea because you've been living in korea for like similar year with me so mm. i think it, there's pl places when i do and when i don't when i play football we don't speak any english playing football it's all korean and, oh. and these are people from in their 20s up to their 60s uh, and these are people that some of them you can tell are pretty sort of the earth not much money and others you can tell these guys are pretty rich it's a lovely team and um 
they embrace me differently, but they all just embrace me. I think it's because I can speak Korean. Mm. I, I, that's one of the main things. And I know my h o c h i n g s right? So on Wednesday, I had to ask Tio, like this guy I play with, like, what year are you born? Because I was always calling him Tio, and he went, 77. And I went, oh, shit, okay, h a n g y And because I would, he's got a baby face, man. The guy looks so young, and he, he told me eventually it's because he, he only got married three years ago. He got <laughs> married really late, so no stress. This was exactly <laughs> as he described it, yeah? Um, but I think as when I do the... The titles and the honorifics and the Korean, yeah. Mm. yeah. I think if you don't do that, you'll, you, people will like you, but you'll always be outside. Mm. Yeah. So that's kind of hard. Yeah. The titles are really hard. Mm. Title? The titles, the Hochings and oh. the, the Hyongli. Like, I'm playing football and I'm like, that's Ikson, right? And that's Tiho. And they're both my Hyong names. And I'm like, give me. Ikson h y o n g n i it's too long. It's just, it's, it's on, like, it's on, like, how do you do that, Charlie? Like, if you've got lots of h y o n g n i m s on your football team, and there's three or four of them, like, there's the right back, the centre back, I mean, the field. Do you, do you just call them all h y o n g n i m or do you call them Ikson h y o n g n i m Tiho h y o n g n i m Tiho h y o n g I guess in, Tio. in that context, yeah. I guess uh, it's like you can kind of drop it because you're a team. Yeah. But um, in any other situation, I think there's just. Uh, there's always like a, a power dynamic at work. If this guy is older than me, I've worked longer than him, but he's older than me, so I have to treat him with respect. Mm. Mm. Whereas if he's b a n g n e which is like, you know, he's like the youngest one and also probably the least experienced, mm. then he, you, you feel like you're entitled to his respect and like he has to work harder than you, mm. which I'm not saying that that's right, but we've all been in that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're Korean and you've you know, been in a, work, in a, in a workspace. So um, up until the moment you die, you're always going to have someone who's higher than you, who's on the same level as you and who's mm. you know, beneath you. And I guess that can be something that is uh, stressful for, for Koreans because we're all born equals, right? Like we're all individuals. Like the word individual suggests that we're our own person mm. and that we are deserving of respect and we're born with that right. But how much respect? Mm. this guy's older than me he's worked harder than me so I owe him my time and I owe him my respect but that only exists in Korea mm-hmm. so if you were to leave Korea and go to the States you can be friends with a guy who's 20 years older than you mm-hmm. but you couldn't do that in Korea mm-hmm. so people who want that I guess are uh, find the idea of t a r j o s unattractive but if you're okay with it then and you're okay with um succumbing to that power dynamic that you have no matter where you go in Korea, mm-hmm. then, then I guess it's okay. I guess... Um, have you adapted to it? Are you all right with it? Uh, I think the military really changed, changed that for me. Mm. Uh, initially, I did not understand why I had to... Um, why, why I deserved to be treated that way and why other people who were of a lower rank mm. had to be treated that way. But honestly, it does get shit done. You know, uh, there's no there are no real arguments in the workspace. You just do mm. what the most experienced guy in the room says and shit will get done. You may hate him, mm. but it will get done. You're not going to have um, a lot of conflict. Mm. I'm not saying it's right, but it does get shit done. And This is a weird question. Has it affected your relationship with me? Like when you text me now, you're like, yes, boss. <laughs> 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 I'm suddenly getting very personal. But yeah. I'm just curious because you're talking about the military changes. Here, yeah. It puts those uh, relationships. Has it had any of effect like that? So I remember, like, I think you remember me as a completely different person pre-military and post-military. Yeah. Right? Appearance-wise, and my, I've just came out a, a new person. Yeah. And I took a lot of time to reflect. And I think... Um, This is a controversial opinion in Korea. I will obviously use Chun Dem Mal and call people Hyung Nim and call mm. people by their title uh, in a professional setting. Mm. But honestly, you should just get as much respect as you give out. And that's, uh, that's something I think anyone listening to this, you can, you can take that home. And uh, if you behave that way in Korea, you will ultimately receive the same amount of respect. Mm-hmm. And... the c h o n n e m a l and everything else. It's just a base level of respect, I guess. And that's actually a positive thing to have in Korea. People do have yay, and when you don't, then you're kind of shocked. But mm-hmm. it's just a base level of respect that I think everyone should have. 
And, um, you know, there are settings like, I think I consider you my friend, but that's the Wegugin side of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I was, you know, like, uh, like in our academic setting where I do meet you in the classroom, mm -hmm. then in that setting, you're my professor. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think it is, it, once you just, you know, understand what setting you're in, what context you're yeah. in, I think you can kind of, uh, have you know different relationships with the same person and that's how i see you know that's how i see you and me and you know my friends and other people in my life sure no okay. it makes perfect sense i think mm. like for example if i meet an ambassador in a very casual setting or something like that you might use their name their first name if you meet them at a formal event and there's other people around it's sometimes good to say oh mr ambassador or something like that just to do those things one of my students was telling me this week Jimin she was telling me about her professor makes them all use piano oh I I listened to that lecture okay yeah so this is like 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 piano like comfortable old yeah. language and she was telling me she hates it <laughs> so it's real different so can you first explain what it was because she only told me very briefly about it she was like David I need to tell you about this thing right because it's not chondemal it's not panmal it's not honorific it's mm. not low language but it's comfortable language mm, yeah um, it is called pyeong oh pyeong yeah pyeong um, I like pyeong like fairness or something equal um, I guess pyeong. I guess because panmal means pan is half and mal is word so mm. that means the word or sentence is like half Mm -hmm. But Pyeongho is real. Um, it differs with the nu nuance mm -hmm. because Panmal feels low key rude, but Pyeongho seems more familiar or somehow affectionate. So the professor of the lecture said that uh, he wanted to use Pyeongho because th um, he didn't really feel felt like to set the power dynamics yeah. in the class. Yeah. And even if when we are using chundemmal, um, the professor's chundemmal and the student's chundemmal to each other would be different. For example, the word for eating, um, I would ask you to um, 식사하셨어요, which means like, did you eat? Mm. But you you can say 윤서 학생 밥 먹었어요. Mm. Like, 밥 and 식사 is different. The the power dynamics. Exist even in the Chonden Mar. So he wanted to remove all of that. So we use the same nuanced words. Mm -hmm. mm. What would be an example of uh, a sentence in Pyeongho mm. and one in Panmal? So mm. imagine he's saying, like, I How does Pyeongho work in that sentence? Or, or just something like that? Can you put it out? Because I don't quite know. Um, Panmal sounds exactly same with Pyeongho, but yeah. some words are prohibited in the Pyeongho because like you are not meant to really curse or say bad words mm. in Pyeongho mm. because you you should be affectionate as you are treating your um, baby sister or like cousin sister kind of thing. Mm. But for Panmal, um, that's the word or like um, the attitude that mm. you use with your really close friends. Mm. Mm. So I think that's the difference. The baby or friend. Mm. Mm. Have you heard about this, Yewon? <laughs> no. No, no, this is... Okay. Yeah, this is for the first time. This is yeah. first time. <laughs> I can see Charlie grimacing. How are the students taking to it? You don't need to, like, tell all the tales or something. But generally, oh. is it like... It's the vibe is amazing or it's like it takes a while to get used to it. it's a bit weird what's how are people reacting i thought that the ice breaking scene was yeah. more faster than another lectures mm. because the professor was very open to start a conversation in pyeongho mm. and he even encouraged students to talk to him in pyeongho mm. first and um because it's not rude but it's not very distanced like jondemmar mm. so students some of the students feel comfortable with the atmosphere there but some of the students would feel very awkward because they're calling their professor's name without um, any title profession or chundemma words which is which is like awakening of their confessionism inside yeah to do that in Korea, to do that in english is something to mm -hmm. say good morning david that's one thing but if you're mm -hmm. doing it in korean do they say like for example kim ji do they just say ji they, say yeah. kim, they just say tihe, just yeah. the name like that, two syllables. Yeah. Let's say the the 
professor's name is Kim Jihae. Yeah. And we would say, Jihae 안녕? Jihae 뭐해? <laughs> and he asks, asks us to write emails in the same manner. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so like he says that, oh, good morning, professor Nim. Uh, it's such an honor to take your class. He said that we can just remove all of that and we can ask, hey, hey, Jihae. Do we have classes tomorrow? <laughs> and, and, and that's all. That's all. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Do you think this is going to catch on? Yeah, when you want to take a class like this? Yeah, definitely. And I also <laughs> have a question for you. Like, yeah. would it would it be like um, surprising for you if I text you in that way? People do text me in that way. Oh. I think because I think the thing is, yeah, one, it's in English. So when people are texting me in English, some people text me, hello, professor. Some people say, hello, David. Um, some people call me Professor David, which is not quite right. But um, in English, I think it's really different. Mm. But I think it, because it's in Korean. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's that's the weird thing about it. Mm. Yeah. So, for example, if somebody said, hello, David, that's a bit different from saying, David, Danyang. <laughs> 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 that I've never heard that from students. I've heard it in English, but not in Korean. Yeah. Mm. None of this is going on at Hanyang Day? Is this the first you've heard of this? Yeah, that's the first time I've heard of it. Um, it is fascinating. I have a. I, don't, I find it difficult to believe that it will catch on. Mm. I think it would be a good thing if it did, but realistically, I think we're in too deep <laughs> in, t- mm. in terms of the language. Mm. 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 You guys are the guinea pigs. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said that it, it's the first semester him trying that style of teaching. And he said that he saw a professor of Gyeonggi University yeah. who does Pyeongho class yeah. before him. So he thought that it, it is a good idea to do that in my class too. So he did that. I think that his classes in Pyeongho is quite famous in our school, in that you both know about the class. Mm. And one of my professor discussed about that too today. So, yeah. So you're hearing about it a lot. It's yeah, a like 10 times. <laughs> yeah, I know what. I'm going to write an article about it soon. <laughs> Last question. I promise we'll move on to uh, the, closing this up. How old is he, roughly? Is he like 40, 60? In, in his 40s, maybe? So he's quite a young guy then. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit different. Mm. Because it, it would be hard, it would probably be a bit harder to use. Pyeongho. If he was yukship mm. there, I guess. I mean, if it comes from a younger guy, it seems a bit more acceptable. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's what you would say to somebody that was wanting to come to Korea. We started this conversation about like tal joson and leaving and things <laughs> like that. So to kind of wrap it up, um, yeah, one. What do you okay. say to someone that wants to leave Korea? Leave. Yeah, yeah. Oh, somebody, yeah. your 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 onni or your, mm. your your friend slides up to you and they say, you know, I think. I think it's time. I want to go abroad. I want to say that I support them. Mm. And there's always a home for them to come back when they feel tired, when they go abroad. Mm. And um, about getting criticized for like leaving the country. Mm. I know it relates to the question that Korean people are patriotic to their country. Mm. We love our nations and we love our um, Korean spirits. So when... We get sometimes get criticized for leaving the country, like are we trying to abandon the country? Mm. And I'm sure all the people who are trying to leave Tal Joseon, who are trying to do, uh, who are trying to do Tal Joseon, mm. they did criticize internally with themselves too many times. Mm. So I just want to support them and just want to say, if you want to come back to Korea, you're always welcome, and I'll be always there for you. Yeah. I guess it's nice to have a home, isn't it? Yeah. To know that yeah. I mean some people grow up without a home or they grow up without a country or not quite sure. So having that is really good. Mm. Can we talk about this idea yeah, one that sounds beautiful by the way. Well done. It's a, <laughs> it's a very nice message. Um because I, I, I wanted to talk about this but we didn't. That if Korea is gonna get better, it needs people to stay here and fix the problems. So I'm not criticizing your answer, but it, it just reminded me of this that during like the 70s and the 80s, the people didn't run away, but they bought modernization and then they bought democratization that you have to stay here. And if you get a lot of people going abroad, the problems here remain, but you're also losing people capable of solving those problems, people that see those problems, people that it's like a brain drain almost, mm-hmm. or it's like a progressive drain. And that will just leave the country more conservative, 
more old or something like that. Is there, do you have any thoughts, anyone, on that idea of it, that they stay here and get it right first? We, we still got problems to solve. Don't jump a shinking seat mm. or, or it's more about individualism. I don't think that um, educated Koreans moving to another country is a brain drain because um, like Yewon said, they have home in Korea and they know that they are Korean and other people would know that they are Korean somehow by conversation or something like that. So um, what they are doing is somehow promoting Korea. I'm not saying this in a gukbong manner, mm. but um, you can notice that in other places other than Korea. So yeah, I think that's a good way to start a journey. Mm. And as you said, you said that you feel like um, the first time doing that path as mm -hmm. a like um, I don't remember the exact term but yeah and I think that um, people should be more present um, living abroad other than Korea or um, other people moving to Korea that should be more present I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's nice that the doors are open. You guys know this because you've heard it from me so many times, but maybe some other people haven't. But Koreans have only been able to travel abroad since 1989. That's ridiculous, man. It's like your parents' generation or, or grandparents, they couldn't do it. Mm. But now the world is open. North Koreans can't do it. They And people from other places, they don't have the economic ability maybe to buy the tickets or to get set up. So the opportunities are there. So yeah, take them if you can, I guess. <laughs> Charlie, people want to leave Korea. What would you say to these kind of people? Do you? I mean, I, I feel like they would really regret it. Um, the a lot of things are taken for granted, mm. and maybe there are some Koreans who move and they really love it there. And if that's the case, then you know they made the right choice. Mm. But it is good to step, uh, you know, step foot outside of Korea to really appreciate the things that they think is that they think are a given mm -hmm. like safety and just safety is a huge thing because it's you know the difference between life and death mm. um and uh i think korea has a lot of things that people can um that people can utilize to make their lives significantly better mm. but it's just not being appreciated enough i think um Education, people have a very, very easy access to education here. That's not the case for, you know, hundreds of millions of people in the world. Um, healthcare in the States, if you if you call an ambulance, it's like Kubengmanon or something. Mm. You don't call the ambulance, it gets called for you. If you get hit by a car mm. and then you wake up in the hospital, you'll see a bill saying that the ambulance was like like nine thousand, ten thousand dollars. That's crazy, right? That doesn't happen here. And these are things I think people should take, uh, should not take for granted. But if all of that is not enough and they want something more that Korea, that Korea cannot offer, mm. then I suppose the only thing you can do is kind of leave with an open mind. Because while I do love Korea and Korean people, they're not very open-minded. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to be open-minded when you go to another country. Do you think that you look, I'm going to say this wrong, but I want to say it anyway. I don't have any bad vibes in this. Do you think that in terms of like economy and things that you look down rather than looking up? So when you when you when you evaluate Korea's position rather than seeing it as like the 10th biggest economy in the world and looking up at these other places and going, I want to go there. Instead, you're looking down at these other places and going, you know, other places are not as good, man. This place is all right. Sometimes you, you chase for the stars or something and the wings get burnt. Maybe this is your experience in India or something like that. Do you think that you have that more... You're looking down there and saying, this place is all right, rather than going, yeah. Yeah, the, for sure. Because, uh, I mean, I didn't do anything to make Korea better, but Korea I, fought... You, you served in the military. I did. You you guarded okay. the DMZ with a sniper did. rifle. I did. Full I did. respect to you for that. Yeah. I guess um, so that that and you know Korean men and women who serve in the army it's a collective effort mm. um, but Korea fought really really hard to get where they are right and so some people are like why are Koreans so patriotic and I think Korea was 
really close to not being a thing. And uh, if you look into the history of Lee Sun Jin, there's an animated short on YouTube. I watched and I cried. <laughs> and then, I cried, and then the very next day, I called my uh, close friend. He's my tattoo artist, actually. And then I got him tatted on my arm. Oh, wow. So go on YouTube and type in Lee Sun Jin. Shout out to Lee Sun Jin. <laughs> watch, that, watch that short. And then you have The Miracle on the Han River. There are multiple books on it. Yeah. That's an economic miracle, mm. right? It's just a country that has so much shit happen to them. And at any point, I think it should have collapsed, but it never did. Mm. And uh, just being a part of that history, I think, is amazing. And all countries have their history. And I think everyone should be proud of where they are from, even if you choose to leave, ultimately. And it's very easy for Koreans to say that, you know, I'm not a Korean Korean. And I get that. I got that even in the army, mm. which was frustrating because it's like, if I wasn't Korean, why would I be here giving up my time? But Koreans have this idea of being a Korean Korean. Mm. But I have like Wegugin friends who have a Korean passport. They're white and they have a Korean passport. Mm. But no one's ever going to say that they're Hangugin, right? So. Like, I want to know, what does it really mean to be Korean? Like, why does everyone else decide who is Korean and who is not? Um, if you live here and you consider it home and, you know, you have some ties to this country and you've done some, like, you're, this is where your roots are, then I think you're Korean. doesn't matter if you're white or you look like me um, or you are Korean, Korean. Uh, that's something that people should be aware of. Like, why, why are Koreans so patriotic? Mm. There are... Uh, if you just look into the history, I think, I think it will fascinate you. Because it was so nearly not there, and it yeah. was not meant to happen, and nobody predicted it, and yeah. uh, it wasn't necessarily. So I, 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 I probably told you, but I take umbrage sometimes with the word miracle because it, miracle implies like it happened by divine providence or like God came out of the sky yeah. and made this happen. But it wasn't a miracle. It was like blood, sweat and tears of the Korean people just toiling in the factories to, to get it done. And everyone was like, no, they're not going to get it done. That won't happen. Yeah. Asian people don't do that with all the racist tropes of the past. Right. And Jesus, they did. They actually did. Yeah, when well, are you gonna get an Eastern Shin tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> Someday, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just really curious because we have you both together, and it's so amazing that you both have your own opinions. Because I think if we all had the same thought, it would be boring. What do you think about Charlie's take on it? Like, mm, I really appreciate what he said, and also I'm curious, like, with all respects to your service, does your um, service to the country and your citizens make you feel more patriotic? I think in the army is where you will experience like the least patriotic people because everyone says, oh, I wish I wasn't born Korean. Like mm -hmm. they'll say, in and I wish that or something because they're like, well, why is it my fault that I'm born a male and Korean and I have to give up so much of my life? Mm -hmm. But once you're out of the army, they all think that it's like a, it's a good memory. It's a place where you made friends. Um, maybe they may not think so, but it is a place where they did serve, you know, and protect the country. Because mm -hmm. um, it, it is a collective effort. And uh, I came out more patriotic, mm -hmm. definitely. And I think uh, everyone really should, you know, take, take a moment to appreciate, you know, people who, not just soldiers, but, you know, police and everyone who, you know, does their bit to make Korea a bit safer. Mm -hmm. And that's enough to be proud of, even if you haven't been to the army. So we need women to do military service and then they'll stay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if I have a chance, I mm. would love to. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. It, it, it's fascinating to hear this go back and forth and, and what would be, what happens in the future of military service and men and women, but at the moment, we need it, and it, 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 it's it's great that people do it. Mm. Yunso, somebody's going to leave? Mm. What, do you, what do you say in this situation? <laughs> I think that um, most of the young Koreans are feeling pressure about leaving Korea for temporarily for studies and experiences because when I talk with my friends, mm. they think that they should go for exchange students or internships abroad, but when, when I ask 
them about the reason why they chose to do so or why they made made such plans, they don't really know about their real reasons because the reasons are not really coming from their heart mm -hmm. because almost all the people, all other people who are their components in their job or their places are almost all going to abroad for experiences. So if they are doing, I should do that kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that if you are to leave Korea, that's cool, and I support you, but you have to get your goals straight, and you have to make the goals very specific. I want to get this experience because of the, um, I want this values from it, and like this experiences. And then I think that you can succeed or feel happy about the experience, but if you don't really have the reason and you just feel like to go abroad because of all of your friends are going to do so, then I would not really recommend it, but I support them anyways. Mm. It's amazing because I'm the exact opposite of you. <laughs> I'm, I hear exactly what you're saying. It makes sense. Don't just do it because it's a trend. Do it because if you really want to do it and life in Korea can be very competitive and difficult. So make sure you know what you're doing and, and get it sorted. That makes absolute sense to me. Totally understand it. I guess from my experience, when when I came to Korea, and I would have been about the same age as you guys, right? When I, when I came over here, I had no plans. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I was doing. And of course, we, we've talked about identity and language and passports, how that's different. But I was just like, let's let's go and see. Let's let's go. And so it was Mukebek. There was no plans. It was just following uh, an instinct or something like this. And some people ask, and I could go back to synchronicity and go, well, I watched the movie Old Boy, and then I saw the 2002 World Cup, and I had this Korean roommate that used to play online poker. So I was getting some Korean into my subconscious, um, the word Korea, at least, into my subconscious. But also there's this idea that, oh, man, just sometimes go the other side of the world and, and see what it's like and go and shake people's hands and eat the food and sit in a rough part of town and, and, and see what goes on because there's a lot and you might find you like it, you might find you don't like it, you might stay there, you might leave immediately, but uh, at least you found something. You worked out something. And the best thing about it is, I think, you work out something about yourself because that place is always there and you go there and then you realize I like it or I don't like it and you're discovering yourself. So I think it's a journey of uh, beautiful discovery and that now Korean people can make that choice. Wow, that's great. Like you're the, like we talked about the Confucianism and things like that, right? You know, you don't have to follow your parents. Well, you should, you can, right? <laughs> but you, you can actually do things for yourself now, which is very cool. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think um, going abroad is definitely a challenge for you and like if we go on to abroad and we like struggle and then we can have um kind of a self reflect in mm -hmm. ourselves and try to think like oh actually i did like korea so i would like to go back or oh i think i fit in this society so it's not a mm -hmm. permanent thing like it's not like if it once decide that you have to leave Korea it's not like you're abandoning it and you're going abroad for like 30 years you can just come back whenever you want so I think it's just like calculating mm. it's a step forward yeah least. yeah and if you ever want some chuchon sauce or something like that, <laughs> yeah. me, that seems to be what I'm good at just before we wrap this up another idea has come into my mind it always happens when I'm trying to wrap it up I don't know if you can speak about this any of you at all do you think sexuality comes into it? We talked about gender. We talked about money. We talked about identity. Um, I'm not sure how much experience you might have of it or what you can say, but do you think sexuality might come into it? Like if you're LGBT, if you're gay, or if you're bisexual, it's like, well, it's not about what I want or I don't want. I can live here. I can't live here. I'm just throwing that out there. Does that make any impact on it or something, do you think? Is it possible to be gay here? It's very, very hard, I'm mm. sure. Mm. I have friends friends who are they've come out but it's really really hard mm. and they are there are gay bars and gay clubs in Itaewon and I that I'm aware that there's like a district but it's a very small part of Korea where you can just go and be free whereas you mm. have countries where same-sex marriage is legal mm -hmm. and you can feel free and there's this like 
collective understanding that you no, know, you cannot not hire them because they're gay. You can't um, look at them weirdly just because they're dressed a certain way or because mm-hmm. that because you know they're two two males holding hands or two females holding hands. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't seem to exist in Korea yet. Like uh, you don't really see people being uh, openly proud about their um, mm-hmm. about their sexuality just because they can't be. Um, so that is difficult, I will say, but I think that's more so for Korean people. But uh, I've had some of my friends who are gay who have come to Korea and they, you know, just behave like they would in any other country. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get like arrested or anything. It's not to that degree, mm. but it's it's not a very um, open society yet mm. in that sense. This is one that I learned from a, a, a queer scholar. Seoul has more gay bars than New York City. Really? This is what I've learned from the research. I haven't gone around and counted them. Um, (laughs) But in New York City, you can be out and people don't. You can, if you have a boyfriend and girlfriend, you can go to a bar and you can sit and you can have dinner and it's no problem. But in Korea, people feel uncomfortable if you're gay on the subway, like with a partner, if you're lesbian on the subway, or if you do it in the bar. And so you have these gay areas so it's Itaewon, Jongno, Samgai, Sinchon. You have these areas where you can go and be safe and you can be free, but as long as you just keep it in there and don't do it in society. And so mm-hmm. there's this real kind of ghettoization of it, which is which is nice because people have a spa- safe space and they don't get arrested, right? And, and that's cool. But it also means you don't really see it in day to day life. Mm-hmm. In the international buildings at Hanyang and things like that and with those you can see it a bit more. But I think in in day-to-day life, if you go to the Sam Gipsal restaurant, go to the Pyeonghi Jam, go on the subway, you don't see it as much. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think that's the reason why Korea is not open to LGBTQ people because they we don't have um, exposure to that people, so we can be um, discriminating people mm. not because we an- intend to, but because we don't know the people well. Mm. So. If we have full exposure mm. to people who are gay, who, who people who are lesbian, then we can become more open-minded and become a more friendly society. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, and it, I completely agree with you. And it might keep more people here because I don't know how many students. It's part of the Y two K vibes that have been popular recently. But students tell me, I'm watching How I Met Your Mother and all of these things, and there is association with outside of like progressive cultures or identities. You know, it, it's there, and they're like. Let's go and have a gay friend aboard or something, yeah. Yeah. I, I think this was amazing. Uh, I, I learned so much. We went all around the houses. I learned some new words. Um, I learned some new ideas. And I think you guys are so incredibly brave to talk about this and to have different opinions from each other uh, and, and speak into a microphone because I know it's like, <laughs> oh, my God, what if somebody listens to this and hears me? And Sometimes you're just talking and then you catch yourself and you think, fuck, this is being recorded. Like, what happens? But you still did it. And so, guys, like, thank you for the courage. Thank you. Thank Thank you you so much. (laughs) Great. Done. Awesome. (laughs) Woo! How's that year one? That's your first podcast. (laughs) Charlie's done one before. yun has done lots. Are you okay? Yeah, it was very exciting. And also... I had some materials that yeah. I want to say, but yeah. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, it always <laughs> yeah. It always happens. yeah, because I wanted to add that mm. people who are trying to leave Korea yeah. are actually the people who really loves Korea. Because I actually very love Korea, and I really respect how we went through such a rapid development. So, but we still have some problems because of the rapid development. So, mm. if we go abroad or something and we meet other people and we can have more um, open minds and have some um, solutions that we can go through Mm. and we find that and we come back to our country and we can like alter our country to a better place Mm. but I didn't add that to my podcast I'll leave this in (laughs) I'll leave in the part where you're getting the air it's still recording yeah. yeah You'll be influenced by Charlie mm. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the 사장님 asked her, is it her debut? <laughs> I think you did very well, yeah. Yeah, thank you. you. At it. Well done. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Okay.
Floyd has been to one and to one. Racist cliches. American dream! I do want to ask Representative Gates. American dream! Political correctness. American dream! Man, you see how woke I was? I told you that. Exploit that and so on and so on. Women and so on. You see the beast.